This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and look, it's the black Surface Pro, right? No, this is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet, third generation. And oh my God, they get the award for most evolving design. The first gen ThinkPad X1 tablet, if you remember, was considerably smaller and considerably weirder. It had this kind of base with an active fan solution in it. It was totally over-engineered. And we gotta give Lenovo credit for, for trying to really hard not copy the Surface Pro design. So the second generation got a little bit more normal. It had a kickstand kind of design, a 12 and a half inch display. So now it's all grown up 13.3 inches. So for those of you who like the Surface Pro, but find the display a little bit small, uh, I'm one of those two. When I use it for note taking, it's okay. For art, not so much. Uh, then, yeah, it, it's it's kind of great. The kickstand now has two positions, so you're not so limited in your use. Uh, one of the other most exciting things is, is obviously this has Intel eighth generation dual core or uh, quad core, rather 15 watt CPUs inside. Yeah, eighth gen is the thing now, but finally, no more Core M or Core Y low power CPUs. We have the full Core U series, so you can get the i5 or the i7 inside of here. So you got a lot more horsepower, which is something that they could do now that they have the bigger chassis here, and also because Intel's eighth generation CPUs are really very good when in, term, in terms of power and the thermals and all that sort of thing. And they can ramp really low down and then they can go, go back up. The idea being that it's not going to overeat in the chassis. So that's a lot of stuff to change and it's for the better. We're going to talk about it now. So part of being a Surface Pro competitor and the good part for a lot of people is that three by two aspect ratio display. For those of you who like having more height for web pages and that sort of thing, it's, it's really enjoyable. Granted, that does mean black bars when you're watching video, but for productivity, that three by two really rules. So it's a 3000 by 2000 pixel display. It supports both pen and touch. By the way, both the keyboard and the pen, which is a Wacom AES pen, are included in the box. No extra spend. Pricing starts around $1,279 or so. It's available with a Core i5-8250U or a Core i7-8650U. Your choice there. RAM 8 or 16 gigs, and that is soldered on board so you can't upgrade it. And you can get a PCIe NVMe SSD. It's an M.2, the usual socketed or slotted SSD. You can see the rest of the specs on screen. Another charming thing with the ThinkPad X1 tablet is you can actually open it up, take the back cover up to upgrade it. There's a bunch of little tiny Phillips head screws that you unscrew and then you can take off the cover and you can service it. So big selling point versus Surface products that are glued together. So getting inside is just no fun. And it makes sense because ThinkPads are business line products and those are supposed to be serviceable by your IT department. So the pen that comes with this supports pen and touch both. This is a Wacom AES digitizer and pen. It's an active pen. It has a quadruple A battery inside. I've seen some literature that refers to this as rechargeable, not the one that we got. No charging port. It's just a regular AAAA energizer battery that it comes with. So anyway, two buttons on the pen, no eraser on the end. 4,096 level of pressure sensitivity. This is the latest Wacom AES generation with tilt support, though again, you might have trouble finding applications that support it, but the Windows Ink, Modern Ink built-in applications will support it. Obviously, this is a very thin tablet, 8.9 millimeters, if you're talking about just the tablet by itself. There's no place to put this in a silo. So what they give you is, you know how Lenovo loves to give you these little removable plastic things that stick into USB-A ports, and it acts like a little inkwell where you can put your pen. Well, this one, since it doesn't have a USB-A port, they made a special little slot just to put this little piece of plastic in. That is your little ink pen inkwell that it comes with. So obviously, you stick this in a bag. I would worry about. It's very rubbery. I don't think that it's going to break off, but it's not really going to hold the pen in place while this is in your bag. So I leave it up to you as to whether you would use that. Though it is very thin for a t tablet of this size, it's gotten a little bit heavier since last generation. 1.96 pounds. You can see the metric stuff on screen just for the tablet alone. It used to be 1.69 pounds, which was about the same as a Surface Pro in terms of weight. Put them together, they weigh about 2.8 pounds. When you're talking about Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga territory, almost in terms of weight at that point. 
that weight does afford you some durability, though. You know, it's a ThinkPad, so it's past 12 mil spec 810G tests, shock, vibration, dust, moisture, those sorts of things. So, hey, it's a magnesium and aluminum casing, and yes, it does feel sturdy. Of course, you know, the competition, Dell Latitudes and the Surface Pro also feel pretty sturdy, too. The glass is Gorilla Glass on the front face to give you a little bit more confidence also in terms of durability. In terms of performance, you can see the benchmarks that are going to fly across the screen. It does as well as you would expect anything with this particular CPU. We have the Core i5 model. Again, it's a four-core CPU inside. The performance is good. One thing I'll note, just like with the other recent ThinkPads that we've reviewed, the X1 Carbon and the X1 Yoga, you can see that the CPU, particularly in something like PC Mark 8, is just the clock speed is, is consistent across the top. It's really maintaining that boost strongly, which tells me that they're doing some nice power supply there management and also that they're doing a little probably a modest overclocking of the CPU to keep that otherwise the graph would look like this for the core speeds on so that's pretty good stuff performance is nice on this there is a fan inside which would be normal for a u-series CPU but I rarely heard it which usually isn't the case with Lenovo Ultrabook so that was pretty impressive the back will get warm it typically does not get burning hot when doing everyday productivity things even something like Photoshop compiling a little software code you know that sort of thing so that it's really well done in, in terms of performance and heat. So how is the Wacom AES digitizer that included pen and the writing and drawing experience? It's quite good. I still prefer Wacom AES latest generation a bit more than the Entring that's used on the Surface products and HP Spectre X360 line. In terms of the pressure curves just feeling really very nice and the palm rejection being a little bit better, resting your hand on the glass without extra accidentally having lines vector. It's, it's a very good experience. If you're looking for something that can be great for a little art pastime, or if you're an avid note taker or diagrammer or any of those sorts of things, it's certainly a good pen experience. So why buy this instead of the ThinkPad X1 Yoga? Well, duh, obviously because you feel you have use for a separable tablet. It's lighter, it's more nimble, it's easier to handle. That speaks for itself. If you think that that's a useful thing, instead of using the 360-degree yoga hinge and having a hefty thing with the keyboard facing out the backside, well... The other thing is also the 3 by 2 aspect ratio, which is pretty nice. Some people really like that. They would love to get a Surface, but they won't for whatever reason, or their company won't buy one. This is a way to get a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, high quality display. Nice. But there's no HDR option like you would get with the X1 Yoga or the X1 Carbon, if the current generations, alas. So why guess, get this versus the Microsoft Surface Pro? Well, the, the, one of the big reasons would be the fact that you can actually take back cover off and service it. So Surface Pro is notoriously sealed. It's glued together. You've got to send it into Microsoft if it needs any sort of repairs, which can be a little bit discouraging. Obviously, if your IT department's buying it, they would much rather have something that they can service. The keyboard, if you're not a fan of the type cover, I personally do like it, but it does sound a little bit hollow. It has a little bit of flex to it. Well, this one is a lot more rigid. In fact, they've reinforced it even more. It feels like a regular keyboard. It feels like a ThinkPad keyboard, which is to say the typing experience is excellent. And it has two-stage backlighting. It has a track point, the eraser stick pointer on board. The only drawback is, compared to larger ThinkPads, the key travel is shorter, 1.3 millimeters or so. So, yeah, you're not going to get as much key travel because of the skinny sort of design there. But, wow, nice typing experience. The trackpad's pretty good. Of course, Surface Pro has a pretty good trackpad, too. But this one is a Mylar Surface trackpad, and it behaves perfectly well. The cover, just like the Surface, by the way, has magnetic pogo pin connectors. The, it looks almost exactly the same in terms of the connector design there. Also, that keyboard is a little bit more durable. Instead of that Alcantara stuff, which, you know, can get a little bit nasty or natty looking, this one has a kind of rugged, rubbery back cover that stops it from skating around and, well, it's easier to clean and maintain. Same drawback as Surface Pro, though, is the fact that you've got the kickstand in the back. It's going to dig into your legs, that little metal ridge, and it can be a little hard to balance on your lap compared to a traditional laptop. There is no Windows Hello camera. Yeah, not often do you see that on tablets, but Service Pro certainly has it. You do get a fingerprint scanner on the bezel, though. So for ports, there's only Thunderbolt 3, which is nice. Like I said, one of them is used for charging, and it's versatile. So there's no more modular design. The modular accessories they tried out with previous X1 tablets, that's gone. Because Thunderbolt 3 lets you connect anything you want, pretty much, and Thunderbolt 3 docks. 
But the lack of a USB-A port is annoying. Within five minutes, I had to whip out a USB-C to USB-A dongle just to plug in a mouse, a flash drive, you get the idea. You do have a headphone jack, and there is a micro SD card slot and a nano SIM card slot if you happen to get the optional LTE module on the side. It's one, it's one of those old doors with a pokey hole you need a paper clip to open and close it, so you're probably not going to be putting cards in and taking them out all the time because it's a little bit of a fiddly design. So they did a good job of really tr competing with uh, Surface Pro in terms of display quality. That sets a pretty high bar there. In terms of color saturation, you can see the we've got 99% of sRGB. We've got all the metrics up here. Brightness, 396 nits. This is a crazy bright display. Good for people who are working outdoors. Obviously, it's got some glare. It's a kind of glossy sort of display, but enough brightness to combat that. All of the metrics on this are good. The contrast, the gamma, all of that sort of thing. And it's, it's a Lenovo branded panel. So we can't tell you who actually really makes it. So it all sounds pretty good. Well, the only drawback here is battery life is just so-so. It has a 42 watt hour battery, but you know, that's an okay capacity. It's kind of average, not too bad. In my tests with brightness set to 150 nits and productivity and streaming video sort of tests, a few Photoshop edits, that sort of thing, about five and a half to six hours of use, which is meh. Since it's USB-C based charging, you can use other USB-C chargers with it. They have to be at least 45 watts though, but that shouldn't be impossible. And there are some USB-C battery packs even that can output that much. So there you have it. That's the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 tablet. It gets the award for most evolved tablet in just three generations. You know, usually when we review laptops, each generation is just a CPU improvement, a little change here. This guy just really just keeps moving on with the times, and that's a good thing. What I like about it is the large display. And the whole experience is pretty mainstream. It is the size, like I said, of a 13.3 inch UltraBug, yet you can rip off this keyboard cover right here and have just a tablet. So that makes it very versatile for those of you who do a lot of note taking or who do art. Obviously that's the selling point versus something like the ThinkPad X1 Yoga, which no matter what, you're going to have the base attached. It's a much more heavy, unwieldy kind of thing. Performance is good on this. It really runs quiet as well. I'm really impressed with how it keeps the core speeds going on this. There's not much throttling going on. The display is lovely on this. It's certainly a good Surface Pro challenger in that respect. And that's something we usually don't see in the competitors to Surface Pro, particularly from a business standpoint where the displays are a little lackluster. This one has really good metrics. It's keenly bright. The keyboard, yeah, that's the other selling point. Obviously, it's a ThinkPad keyboard, right, with the track point and all, and it's a wonderful typing experience for those of you who don't like the type cover for the Surface Pro. Low travel, yes, but there it is. The drawback is just Thunderbolt 3 ports. It's great to have Thunderbolt 3, but right out of the box, you're going to need a USB-A adapter, for example. It's kind of annoying. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.